All right, class. So today I want to talk to you about something that's very important to me. Although you are learning your craft as far as cutting hair, I need to show you how to make some money once you have the skill in hand. So today we're going to be talking about client base and credit. And for a lot of barbers, I see the struggle in the barbershop where they go into the barbershop, they start building clientele, and they can't track it, and they don't even have a clue of what how many clients that they need to make a career. So let me kind of break down what my numbers are from a numbers perspective, because I'm a numbers guy, I'm a businessman. So when you go into the barbershop and you go and find a job, you want to target a number which is 250 people. That is your target. Uh, where I got 250 people is because there's four weeks in a month. So you're going to break down those 250 and 60 clients in a four-week period. You're going to have 60 different clients coming to the barbershop. So when you break these numbers down and you can actually see it, it's easier to see what you could obtain a yearly. So let's just go through the schematics. So if I do 60 people and I average $20 a haircut, so you're going to be averaging $1,200 a week. These numbers are easy to achieve when you can see them. When you document them, when you write them down, you'll be able to track them. If you're averaging $1,200 a week, you have just created a $62,000 a year income. How many of y'all in this classroom want to make $60,000? Yes. How many of y'all, when y'all first came to barbering, did you see that you could make $60,000? Was it a feasible target in your mindset that you could be able to do as a barber? Yes. Yes. Very good. Because if you can see it, you can do it. All right? So let me ask you this. What do you think are some ways for you to be able to build clientele? Advertisement. Advertisement. What are other some other ways that you might be able to build clientele? Word of mouth. Word of mouth. Social so media. social media. So when you're branding yourself, there are three components to a brand that I always follow, and I want to teach it to you. First is frequency. What you ask? What's frequency? You know how when you're in your car and you listen to a B103, then you change the channel, you change the frequency. What you did was just change the information or what you're hearing. When you're branding yourself as a barber, you must change that frequency. The most a viable platform right now is Instagram for barbers. You can put, post your social media pictures on there and let them know what it is you do. Let's change the frequency. What is another frequency that you could market yourself or advertise? Business cards. Business cards. That's another frequency. YouTube channels is another frequency that you can go to to target. You want to put all of these frequency vehicles together and launch them at one time. You want them to go out into the communities at one time. So you only got one chance to do this right. So you want to make sure that you do it in a professional manner. Uh, another thing, what's the common denominator of all barbers? What all do we know how to do? Cut all barbers hair. cut hair. So if you want to increase your revenue expeditiously, you're going to have to tap into the tools that you're being taught as a barber. And it's more than just a haircut. You have men's facials. That is a very lucrative uh, market in our uh, occupation. You also have color. There are gentlemen that want to color their gray hair. You have uh, Gilbert who has streaks in his hair. If you know the education, then you can upsell your ticket and get more than the $25 that you'll be charging for a haircut. Also, shaves. We are barbers. That's really important to be able to facilitate razor shaves, hot towel shaves. It's all about education. Yes. Okay, so how long would it take you to reach this target? Okay, so over here, I have a system, which is better known as what? What does system mean? Save yourself time, energy, and money. Save yourself time, energy, and money. So if you develop a system, then you know you're going to have a, a you're going to save yourself time, energy, and money. So I created these spreadsheets. It has 40 names on it. Now I can track my target. So if I'm trying to track, target 250 people, I know roughly I got to fill 7 to 10 pages up on my client database. But where does it start at? Each week, I want you to target four new people. Is four new clients a week very achievable to, to do? Yes. yes, it is. Let me tell you how, by default, you will do it systematically. If you are the first person to the shop every single day and you work six days a week, how many new clients did you get by default? One a day. One a day, which would be six new clients. I told you to target four. So if you target four clients a, a week, in, in one month, you'll have 16 clients. So you calculate that in one year, you'll have 196 clients. So you're still not at the 250 mark. So it's roughly going to take you 18 months to 24 months to successfully uh, get 250 people to do business with you. So some people say, hey, that's a lot of people to do business. But let's break this schematics down on a larger realm. 
There are 10.2 million people populated over 152 counties in this state. All I need for you to do is find 250 people to do business with. Now, when you look at those numbers, doesn't that seem very achievable? If you are in Cobb County, Gwinnett County, and those larger counties, we're talking about over 600,000 people in your immediate county that all you have to do is find 250 people to do business with you. So these numbers are in your favor if you take your business savvy and you make it an administrative part of your business. Okay? Any other questions? Yes. Right, it is a lot. Then your cell phone is technology. I group my clients in my phone as clients and I target them and then it gives you the number of clients that are in that group. So you can go to group and say, oh, I got 197 clients. You have it at your disposable at any time. The reason why I like putting it on my phone is because I'm very cautious about my communication with my clients in the event that I'm not coming to work. I'll text my clients and say, sorry, I'm not gonna be in the office today. Sorry for any inconveniences. Please reschedule your appointment. Let's just say I wake up late or something. I have a flat tire. I can't make it to the shop till 12. I will text my clients and say, I am running late to the office. I will not make it there till 12. Sorry about any inconveniences. Somebody was en route to the shop. But when they got my text message, I just valued their time. And they text me back saying, oh, thank you. I'll go get some breakfast. I'll get some lunch. And I'll meet you back there at 1 o'clock. Or can I make a 2 o'clock appointment? See how important it is for you to communicate to your clients. You are a business owner without being a business owner. When you go into the barbershop, you are going to be an independent contractor. You must use it as a business. Treat it like a business. I own a barbershop. I just got more employees. You have one employee, but your business savvy is exactly the same as mine. I just have a larger overhead. Okay? So now, once we have solidified our client base, we have a substantial amount of revenue a year, what do we do with this money to generate more money as a barber? Now, this business template that I'm going to scratch the surface today is a universal template that you can use for any type of business. You can do it for construction. You can do it for barbering. You can do it for daycares. It does not matter. This template is what is used in America right now, but a lot of people don't know about it. So I'm going to dive in and talk about credit and LLCs. And have, after you have your money, why it's important. Credit. It's a math equation. My, all of y'all heard of my FICO. Am I correct? So your FICO score is what lenders look at for you to be able to see if you're credit worthy. It is not governed by man. There is nobody sitting at a computer to say, hey, Eric, you didn't pay your bill all last month. Let me recalculate your score. It is a math algorithm that is computed for you based on your payment history. So it was made by a mathematician and an engineer, and they got together and created this equation. This equation is in your favor because what do I say about a system? Save yourself time, energy, and money. Okay, so when you understand the system and you get these credit cards, there's a thing called utilization ratio. A lot of people say, Mr. Powell, I don't want credit cards. They have this mindset that credit cards is bad that you don't need to do it. They are bad if you cannot manage them and you have no discipline. They are very bad for you. But in America, if you do not have debt, that math equation that's computed does not give you a score. So you must create some type of debt in America to show the lenders that you are credit worthy. If you on a cash to cash basis, that's fine. You can pay all your bills on time. You can buy your car cashes, but that doesn't give you any buying power. Some people will argue, well, Mr. Power, if you have the capital, then why uh, get credit cards? Why get in debt? Let me tell you, what is the definition of business? Does anybody know? Let me tell you, when you maximize your profit, and you minimize your cost. That is the nature of business. So if there is a formula in place that allows you to use OPM, which means other people's money to generate you more profit, wouldn't you take this system and, and apply it for yourself? Yes. So that's where the, the debt comes into handy. You want to you get it is how you manage that debt and leverage that debt that the lenders look at for you to be able to get large amounts, 20,000, 60,000, even $100,000 worth of lines of credit, okay? So the utilization ratio is comparison to the credit card. Tiers are different levels that you must go through before you can reach credit worthiness. There's a system that is in place that you need to go through. Uh, in the start of your credit, if you have a blank credit file, you're going to start with a small credit card, Capital One, $200 limit. You must maintain a 30% ratio on all your credit cards. So if I have a $200 limit 
and I need to stay under 30%, then that means I cannot spend no more than $60 on that card at any given time. When you're building credit and this before you get a nice score, do not make a mistake on the utilization ratio or the tiers that are in place. So your credit card comes, it's $200, you spend 60. When the bill is due, some people will pay the whole entire bill off. That is a mistake. The reason why it is a mistake is because when you pay the bill off, and the credit reports is going to report your utilization at zero. That means you had no utilization ratio. The math equation is only going to go up if this utilization ratio is under 30%. So if it says zero, then you get zero. You see how that works? But if it reads 8%, 12%, then your the math equation is going to kick in that you're credit worthy because you know how to manage credit. So do not pay your credit card off in full. Pay $50, leave a $10 balance. You are going to get hit interest, but you're going to get hit interest on a dollar thirty-two cent, a dollar forty-two cent, based on it. It's pennies on a dollar, but it's you're paying into the system for your credit score to go up. Again, it's called other people's money. You use the bank's money to leverage your lifestyle, not your lifestyle, your business endeavors. You leverage your investments when you're trying to make more capital for yourself. This is when credit is very, very good for you. How long should it take to leverage your investment? Very good question. So. Leverage your investment. Let's just say it takes $30,000 to open up a barbershop, turnkey. And you take one of your lines of credit that you have $50,000 and you swipe thirty. dollars When you start generating profit margins, you want to factor in a, uh, a formula or an amount that you are going to pay your credit cards back each month. So let's just say my barbershop is raining in a $4,000 profit. I'm going to leverage $1,000 a month on that $30,000. So how long is it going to take me? It's going to take me 30 months to pay my investment back. So a little over two years. Some people are going to pay $1,500 a month and leverage it in 24 months. But you want to leverage that investment and pay it back because it, two things happen. One, you're debt free and now you have an allotment of money to go into a different business, business endeavor or you can open up another barbershop. Two, the lenders are going to say that you're very disciplined and structured with paying the $30,000 back. When you apply for a line of credit, it's going to be double than what they initially gave you. They're going to give you $60,000. So this template is a successful way for you to make money, use the bank's money in the process, and never use your profit margins, and you'll create wealth over a 10-year run. Okay? Now, I know this sounds like a lot of information. But once you start doing it like anything, it's repetitive. It's a learned behavior. And we are creatures of habit. So that habit of you being disciplined and you paying your bills on time, this is what it starts right here in this classroom. So not only can you be barbers, I've shown you how to expeditiously target and track your administration of your career. Once you get the capital, you translate it into the credit world, leverage the bank's money, and still save your $62,000 a year into your account. Why have $62,000 a year in your account and then take 30 of it, 50% of your savings out to bootstrap your business? That is not a good idea. It's suicide. But they don't teach us that, that there are other vessels and vehicles that you can obtain money without spending your heart on cash. A lot of people have this mindset that I got to spend cash. I got to save it. I got to save it. No, you got to find ways your money will outrun you. Now, I can work for 20 years. Do you really think? by my bare hands, 20 years behind the chair, that I would have collectively collected a million dollars and still pay bills. That is not, a, it's not feasible in my mindset. I would have to work almost 16 hours a day, pulling $200 a day to pull it off. So can it be done? It's a, probably a possible formula, but can you work smarter and do it in half the time? You can get lines of credit quicker than you can get a loan from the bank. Before you get tangible cash, like I go to the, the bank and says, I want to borrow 30000 and you walk out the bank with tangible cash, you can get a line of credit quicker and easier than you can get an actual loan. So this is why I really rely on the credit world to go in there. So you got OPM, which is other people's money. Understand that there's a math equation evolved in credit and know the math equation. Understand that the utilization is the most important part of your debt that you have to manage. Stay un under 30%. And you got to follow the tiers uh, that are involved in the steps that you get before you get your uh, large uh, amounts of credit. And, of course, to leverage your investment. You want to leverage your investment. People used to ask me, Mr. Powell, when do you spend money? I only spend money when I can double it. If I cannot double it, I leave it in the bank. It's worth it for me to spend it. Now, wants and needs is another factor into business. You have to divide that line and understand what does your business need, 
versus what do you want. There are two different things. I only buy things that are going to make me more money. And if it's not going to make me more money, then what, why are you spending it? Why should I go and spend $60 on a steak because I got a $5,000 car because I'm a little hungry? Versus just getting a, a, a lower meal and save your money for a rainy day. This is the poverty mindset that I want to teach you, the business savvy that needs to be brought up in our occupation. And I promise you, you will be business owners way before uh, five years go. Five years go by. You'll do it in two years. Okay? So I want to leave you with this impact, this information. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free throughout the day in passing in class. Uh, research it yourself because all this information that I, I told you, you can research for yourself and get it in real time. Any other questions? Why is the utilization ratio so important? It's important because lenders are looking at are you a credit risk. They have an assessment that goes through when you when they look at your credit file. And if you're staying under 30% of your 100% credit that they offered you, then, then you're not risky. Then you get uh, uh, loans in a higher amount. But if I go over, if all my credit cards are 80%, when I go get a loan, they say, okay, Mr. Powell, we're going to give you a loan, but the percentage is going to be 14%, and we're only going to give you 3000 versus 6000 because we can't trust it. We want to see what you do with the three. But if you maintain your 30% and you go to the bank and you want a $100,000 line of credit, they're going to give you the whole $100,000 line of credit. So it puts you in a better buying power position, a lender position, and it's very important to do. This is not money that you can just blow. This is money you have to pay back. So use it very, very cautiously. Okay. All right. So I appreciate it, class. This is the business side of what I do. It means dear to my heart. And I want to make sure that y'all are better barbers uh, coming in. I mean, leaving than you're coming in.